Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee. It's weather in five, five days and five minutes. Just want to <clears throat> take an opportunity here to let you know that uh, the Joe and Joe Weather Show and Weather in Five and any other weather videos we, we do uh, are also available in podcast format. And uh, you can uh, find the Joe and Joe Weather Show and Weather in Five on Spotify. And soon you'll be able to find them on Apple and on Google. So uh, check those out. If the videos don't work for you, perhaps the podcasts uh, will, and you can listen to them while you're running or exercising or driving in your car. Meanwhile, uh, let's uh, move along to the new week. After a holiday weekend, that was about as summery as it could get. Uh, we had uh, thunderstorms mainly confined to what happened Friday evening. Uh, it turned out to be pretty good for the 4th of July weekend. And we really don't see too much change to start off this week. I think the next three days and possibly uh, the next four days look to be about the same. Uh, hot, humid conditions overall. There'll be some temperature variation from day to day. You'll notice that the northeast down into the mid-Atlantic states, uh, pretty quiet. Uh, we've got uh, a fair amount of sunshine. Uh, I do want to take note of the cloud cover that's in the southeastern part of the U.S. Uh, and back through Georgia, Mississippi, along and along the Gulf Coast. There's a little twist uh, in the cloud cover on the Florida panhandle. There's a very weak circulation there. And while it is over land, it is not going to develop into anything. But we're going to watch this late this week as it moves off the North Carolina coast, because I think it has a shot of becoming uh, a tropical system. Uh, and it may actually find its way up the East Coast and, and, and bring some rain around here, some widespread rain late this week or maybe into the first part of this coming weekend. All of that is in speculation mode, so we're just kind of putting it out there. In the mean, in meantime, in the short range, we do have a risk of severe weather today, marginal risk of severe weather over much of Pennsylvania, southern New York, southeastern New York to New York City, Long Island, and western Connecticut, all of New Jersey, Delaware, just about all of Maryland, and northeast Virginia, and a small portion of West Virginia. Again, that's a marginal risk, and you can see where the slight risk is in this banana-shaped region from Montana on east across South Dakota into Minnesota and Wisconsin. Just give you a heads up for tomorrow into Wednesday, we're looking at severe weather risk mainly up in the northern plains uh, and, in the no and uh, into uh, central Montana. Uh, in the east, it's all general thunderstorm activity, not anticipating anything severe. And day three, which is Wednesday into Thursday, also general thunderstorm activity with severe weather risk uh, in uh, parts of Minnesota and eastern uh, South Dakota. The uh, morning radars are fairly quiet, but again, just pointing out, if you look at how the, the bands of rain that are on the Florida panhandle, there's a little bit of a hook here on the radar. So there's some kind of weak little low that we're seeing. Uh, a lot of uh, activity running east-west across the Gulf states, uh, also seeing some activity up in parts of Minnesota and the Dakotas. And at least as of 8 a.m., there's nothing going on in the northeast uh, that uh, we're concerned about. I, I suspect we're not going to see anything pop up on the radars until sometime later on today. It's very warm and humid. The uh, temperatures this morning bottomed out mostly in the upper 60s to mid 70s. Uh, we're already seeing temperatures at 8 o'clock in the morning jumping over the 80 degree mark in some places, and the dew points are in the mid 60s to around 70. So the atmosphere is rather juiced up here for the possibility that some scattered thunderstorms could pop up late today. And again, the Storm Prediction Center going on the idea that perhaps we have a marginal risk for our neck of, uh, neck of the woods, eastern Pennsylvania to southern New England. Speaking of the tropics from earlier, I want to point out that we do have Tropical Storm Edward way out in the Atlantic. It's a minimal tropical storm, and it'll be gone soon as it becomes extra tropical. But uh, it did set a record. It is the uh, fifth tropical storm of the season, the fifth named storm. And... We've never gotten to the east storm this early in the tropical in the hurricane season before. The old record was back in 2005 uh, with uh, Emily forming on July the 12th. So this beat it by a good six days, and that is uh, going to uh, head out. And again, it'll be gone by tomorrow. Weak tropical wave approaching the windwards, no development there. And this is the system, as we mentioned. The Hurricane Center actually has a 40% chance of this developing into a tropical cyclone over the next five days. And, and the primary threat time for anything to form would be late this week. So uh, I want to just give you a quick look at what's happening. The upper air 
this week. We, we're kind of on the edge of that northern jet stream that is staying up across New England. And that, that means hot, very warm to hot weather for us. Not excessive, but just sort of typical for this time of year. But there is a bit of a weakness when you in, in the flow down in the southeast and Gulf states. And there's a little shortwave trough. You see that little circle there over eastern North Carolina. That represents uh, the system that's in the Gulf states. And it kind of tries to edge up the east coast as the... Uh, as another shortwave trough drops into the western Great Lakes late this week, that kind of acts as a bit of a lever to lift up that system up along the coast. It'll be a question of whether it lifts up along the coast or whether it gets kicked out to the northeast. Uh, and then as we move through the weekend and into next week, there's more of a trough that moves into the eastern part of the United States. So that probably will break uh, the heat down uh, to uh, some extent. So here's how it looks on the surface map. Again, pop-ups really the rule, just a couple of weak weather systems going by. Here's the uh, late this afternoon and evening. We're seeing a flare-up of some thunderstorms on the uh, GFS uh, across uh, uh, New Jersey, uh, down into Maryland and northeast Virginia. So I think the marginal risk is justified, just a little shortwave trough moving by. You see the system down in the Gulf producing rains in the Carolinas on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, it shifts to the coast. So we've got a little weather front that comes through the northeast on Wednesday with some scattered storms late in the day. And then that low starts to edge northward. Uh, Thursday, we'll probably have arriving clouds. And then if this verifies, we could see some rain here for at least for coastal areas Thursday night into Friday morning as a low lifts up to the northeast. Uh, uh, getting this far down the road on the models with something like this is not particularly useful because uh, we don't know the full extent of how much moisture we're going to be deal with, dealing with. Is it going to be a tropical system or is this going to be a plain old low? And quite frankly, even if it is a tropical system, uh, it in some respects might be good news in that there are a lot of areas in the mid-Atlantic and northeast that are running on the dry side. Uh, and uh, this would be more of a rainmaker than anything else. We're not talking about anything that's going to de uh, develop beyond what what we've indicated, even if it does. So let's just put that on the table right now and, and uh, move on from there. So Joe and Joe uh, show tonight at 7 o'clock. We'll talk about this and other goings on. So do tune in. And as I said earlier, it's also available as a podcast, and you can find it, Weather in 5 and the Joe and Joe Weather Show on Spotify. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you later.